Carrie Roberts here and I have definitely been on a kick with the tactic of persistence in my atomic spotlights. Today we're going to look at a method of persistence that could be could fit under the category of boot or log on auto start execution and that's where it's found today in atomic red team but really I think it's a better fit under the category we covered in the other recent atomic spotlights which is event triggered execution which is t1546 instead of t1547 so in the future you may see this atomic that we're playing with today get moved to t1546 but technically it could fit under here too and you'll see that once we get talking about it so let's go over to t1547.001 in atomic red team so I'll open up this tab. I have Atomic Red Team GitHub bookmark here. In Atomic Red Team, we can go into the Atomics folder where the library of scripted cyber attacks is found. And let's search for 1547. And we'll go to 1547001. And here we have the expected markdown version and the YAML version. The YAML version being the true source of the official source of atomics but the markdown version is just a lot easier to read it's it's got the same information as the yaml in a different format so we'll look at this markdown version boot or log on auto start execution this is for registry run keys or a startup folder things that are set by windows to run when a user logs in or when the computer reboots Let's look at what atomic tests we have. We have all the way, all these blue tests. We have reg key run, reg key run once, on and on and on and on, all the way till we get down to test 16 and 17 we're, that we're gonna look at today. So the only difference between test 16 and 17 is that one sets a registry key in the local machine hive that hive applies to all users of the machine because it's applied to the machine as opposed to the current user CU hive which applies only to the current user who was running the command or setting the registry key. So <clears throat> for us as our current user, the art user, either one of these things will give us the same results but for other users if we only set the current user key it won't affect other users. Let's click on this to look at what it is. So it says, an adversary may abuse the command processor auto run registry key to persist. So every time that somebody starts cmd.exe or something, the computer is using cmd.exe in the background scripts and applications and they're using it all the time. Every time that runs, it will also run whatever we list here under the command processor auto run key in the registry. There's a reference here to more information on a blog. So here's the attack commands. You run this with PowerShell from an elevated command prompt. So we're just creating a new registry key called command processor, giving it a name of auto run. And then the value is just whatever we have set here as our command, notepad.exe. So that gets replaced with notepad.exe. And then it sets that registry key, basically telling Windows that every time you start command.exe, also start notepad.exe. So this Atomic is using notepad just as an example, something visible that we can see when command starts to see if it's working although an attacker would do something that isn't noticed when it runs something that isn't visible which would be their malware usually a command and control framework that gives them access to execute whatever command they want on their victim system and it does that in a persistent way meaning every time the user restarts a computer which in turn starts cmd.exe or any other application or the user starts cmd.exe the malware is going to run giving the attacker access again if they have lost it then there's also a cleanup command that just removes that key and makes it so notepad doesn't start so that gets us back to where we could run this test again we could emulate this again and we could check our detections 
I have Atomic Red Team already installed. So we need to run this as an administrator. So I right click and run as administrator. And I'll say invoke atomic test T1547.001. And I'll show the brief details, just the names of all the tests to make sure we're in the right place on the right technique number. And we do see test 16 and 17, the tests that we're interested in. So let's specify that we're interested in test 16. And before we actually run it, we will show the details, not the brief details, but the full details of this test, which is just going to be a version of that markdown file here within the command prompt for us. And I don't like that coloring when I do that. So it just has the name and description like it did online. It has the tack command, which says create this registry key, auto run and fill in whatever command we want. And what's nice about this version that you don't get with the markdown is it shows the command with any variables filled in. So here where the red text is, that's been replaced with the default input argument from the table as notepad.exe. We could specify a different executable as we run it, say no, don't use the default command, use something else so it's configurable as we run it. But notepad's fine for our example. So let's go ahead and run this. All we need to do is specify the test number without any of these additional options or flags and press enter. Well, before I do that, let's show, we'll start command prompt and we'll just show that notepad isn't popping up. Uh, close that and now we'll do this. This is telling it every time you start notepad, every time anybody starts notepad, any user on this machine, because we're changing the, the Hive key, HK, LM, local machine, local machine. So it applies to everyone. Now we'll start command prompt and we see notepad pop up. So this would be actually in like real attacker life. This would be the malware would be running and it wouldn't be visible and the user wouldn't be aware that something else had launched because command.exe had run. Cool, so let's clean this up. And that's just going to take away the register key that says start notepad. So we confirm we're not starting notepad when we start command prompt. And let's try test 17. So just changing the key for the local user, which is us, the art user is the name of this user. Run test 17. And as far as we're concerned, it runs the same way. It works the same way for our user, but I have another user on this virtual machine called Bob. If I log into Bob and start his command prompt right now, it wouldn't start notepad, but on the last atomic, it would have because it applied to the whole machine. I'm actually curious if we could run this atomic test from a non-admin prompt, because I know you have to be admin to change anything in the local machine hive. So I'm curious if you have to be admin to change it as a current user. So let's try invoke atomic test T1547001.17. It's probably going to complain that the key always, already exists because we didn't clean it up. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it says the property always, already exists. So let's go over here and clean it up and try that again. This is our admin prompt. Okay, so we've gotten rid of that registry key. I'm just curious if we can do that without needing admin. So now I'm over here in my non-admin PowerShell prompt. I'm trying to set that current user registry key. And it looks like it's set and even worked. So that's cool you can actually get persistence as a non-admin. So that's always valuable to an attacker or a red teamer to have a way to get persistence, even if they haven't gotten administrative access yet. Let's take a look at this test and see if the documentation for the Atomic said that we needed admin. I think it did. And we could update that when we move it to T1546, which I'll probably do after this recording. 
and then I can update that this actually doesn't require admin but let's see what it says show details let's see requires admin Ele elevation required true for the HKCU test and we just found that you actually don't need to be elevated because it's the HKCU so cool I'll, we'll get that updated and then uh, you have these persistence mechanisms that you can test with Atomic Red Team. I love this persistence mechanism, the idea that you could set something up to run every time something super popular like command prompt runs is really powerful, especially with the discovery that you can do that without admin privileges. So this is definitely a registry key to keep an eye on in your environment. If you want to learn more about MITRE ATT&CK, Atomic Red Team, and other execution frameworks like MITRE Caldera, Prelude Operator, and Vector, check out my two-day class from Anti-Siphon Training.